Thanks for watching. This is artist Mike Quinn with Have Fun, Make Art with Mike Quinn. We're going to do a really cool project. This is actually a redo. I started out, I was trying to make it a stingray last time, and uh, it ended up into a squid. That was fine. The squid looks good. But uh, this time we're going to go a little different. I'm going to actually fold up the newspaper, just real random, no, no, you know, no college degree required for that. You just roll it up. Kind of make this little little shape and let's go ahead and use this last piece and well actually I can work on top of that so it's always good have one piece underneath and then we have our our little form this is also known as a slump mold so the clay will slump over this piece and I'll move that up forward and then we'll go ahead and cut a slab uh, I like to use this square of the block if you can see and then turn it if you turn it to an angle it's like a diamond so then i'm going to try and cut it pretty even an inch and a half thick diamond out of that and move this piece of clay and you can see that'll be my basic stingray shaped already started so then i have the old trusty rolling pin I always want to keep it nice and clean and smooth and just evenly push and keep it pretty well even. And this actually helps line up the molecules of clay and compresses them and makes them want to stay together. So the rolling pin is very effective. If you don't have a slab roller, don't, don't lose heart because a rolling pin works really well. You can even use one by fours on the side to keep it real even, but with practice you can, you can do it without any training wheels. So, got this stingray shaped, got my paper ready. Let's go ahead and fit it on there, see if we can pull this off see the thickness I'd say you know it's like five eighths just kind of rest it over here bring this guy in and I'm gonna say that's the head of it okay and then in the back spin this around I'll show you a little trick so you can just bring this Together, and this is where we're going to attach the tail. So the tail will stick to that, and then we're back to the face. You see, the this is kind of rounder than I want. So what I'll do sometimes, just to be real careful, you can take a tool and do like a, a just a, a line to trace off of, and also that you know you didn't commit to cutting it. To this general trim job. Okay, and then you can correct it while you're cutting, but that just gives me a general idea. Keep the knife straight up and down with the blade facing towards the cut and in contact with the table, and then just keep your elbow straight. Straighten up the knife. Just do a nice long sweeping motion, and you get a pretty nice cut. Then I'm going to take a nice moist towel, not dripping wet, but just moist. And then I'll take my finger and, and just round out this edge. I'm going to try this one. Okay. So we got our general stingray little body. And then we're this tail is going to come off and look like it has some kind of animated pose. So then I'm just kind of smoothing it out, looking for any bumps. You can see these tiny little, little pockets, I'm just going to try and rub them smooth. And then I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, the eyeballs go about right here. And I'm just going to make that mark. I like to 
give the stingrays kind of bigger eyes. Just a little bit more, more character. So then I'm gonna take a, a good chunk of clay, roll it into a, an oblong, like a, almost like an egg. Egg shape. And then I my knife. Here's my knife. And then I'm going to take the knife and cut it right down the center. Like that. And just carefully twist it out. Scratch these up. Scratch it up here. And then I'll get some slip. Not too much. Kind of check the configuration there. Okay, so those are pretty set. I'll just get my finger moist. Come back and smooth that out. Put the finish on there that I want. Then I'm gonna do eyebrows. Another good chance to give them some motion. So if you just kind of do this tapered shape, smooth out with your fingers, you lay that in there, and then just pinch it off. Smooth in that little connection point. Now I'll do another eyebrow on the other side. So just round it out over your finger, kind of making that same shape again. I want those two pieces to kind of line up. And just pinch that piece off. Okay, so I got the top lid in place, kind of melded it on there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and make the under eyelid. And basically, that's just a real thin little bead of clay. Just roll it out like that. Lay it up in there. Pinch off the end. Another one, nice little thin bead. Not so thin that there's there's a limit. You don't want to make it. Just cut it to fit, and then tuck it back in. Want these to line up as best we can. Then I use a pointer tool. Come around, compress that connection, and that really holds the whole eyeball in place. I mean, we slipped and scored the eye, but I like to make this good connections. And then we get to add his direction of view, which is always fun and also uh, kind of helps bring it to life. So here we go, we're gonna say, let's make them look over this way. One eye is going that way. Right here. That's pretty good. And I was looking at the nose of this and it's, it's so pointy and I, I was kind of thinking about it. And uh, just to adjust a little bit, I think it would be cool is we can actually make it into a manta ray with one simple cut. <laughs> now it's a manta ray. So then we'll just come in and you kind of flatten these, make them like little wings in the front.
And now, you know, Stingrays, their jet propulsion system, it has like a little breathers on the edges here. I like to do it at the same time so I kind of know they're both the same depth. And then come back and you can mark it with just your fingernail and it makes a nice little detail. Okay, so now we'll scooch it forward. Okay. And then we got a few little rough spots. Now, the next part of this little plan, this grand scheme, will be to give it a tail. And on a stingray, that's the most dangerous part is the tail. So you gotta make this thing look dangerous. So what we'll do, there's the dog. We're gonna, uh, I don't wanna make it too spindly or too long, but I do want them to notice it. So I'm gonna just kinda make this shape and then find a nice flat spot on the table free of any debris and just drop it and it gives me a nice flat edge and then just a little over from there drop it again and then I've got this and that'll actually kind of help it hold its shape when sticking out in space because then it's flat on the sides and then I'm going to come over here and then line it up on the tail and say well oh, it looks pretty pretty good but I'm gonna just cut a little bit off here and I'll cut just a little off of here so I got two nice flat connections then I get my pointer I'm gonna just do a real simple X so cross hatching same thing over here get some slip on there slip to make it stick here we go and then so on this connection this is a really critical connection I want to really compress it and make sure that this is as good as it possibly can be because if this will be a, a place where I might want to break if you didn't make a good connection and the trick too is to keep it smooth and natural looking like where it's not going to distort because you're concentrating on rubbing on that one area. You got to do some careful attachment here not to distort the rest of the shape. But you can see it just starts to blend together. It looks like it was all part of the same thing. And then I can start playing around with the tail. And what I'll do before I do that is make a little kickstand so that I can support it once it's up. The same thing, you can kind of flatten out the, the sides on this and it'll, it'll make it stand up a little better rather than just rounded. So I like to give it a maximum amount of action but didn't one of the tricks you want to roll this tail in on itself and that'll protect it from getting broken later if, if it's got that tail wrapped around the skinny part. So I kind of like that pose there. I'm going to take my kickstand and just connect it as best I can. And see if it'll stay. Cool. And now for the next part, we've got the basic shape. We've got the eyes on there. We got his little jets, the tails connected, and we've got the kickstand holding it. I see it's a little bit of a seam where I made the connection. So you, you want to really try and make that as natural of a connection where you just don't see the connection is the ideal. So we've got it pretty much well formed. We've got the eyes in place and then kind of the final little 
detail that I like to do, and this is a good lesson, is that, you know, sometimes the best tools are your hands. And so, you know, e even though you could make this mark with the tool, I really like to just use the edge of my finger and it gives me a really nice feel on, you know, how it's gonna, you would think that it's a, some special tool, but it's, it's just your finger. And you just do those lines and it kind of gives it a little more texture and, and I'll just wet it and smooth that out. Helps kind of give it a little more action and we can even pose these a little higher just to give them some, some action. So that's it. I'm pretty much uh, ready to just let it dry and then we'll fire it and glaze it up or paint it. And see, it started out as a stingray and I just didn't like the pointiness. So again, my stingray, the elusive stingray awaits, but we're, uh, I like the manta ray. That's not something you see every day. So uh, I'll keep it and I like it. Until next time, I hope you're inspired. If you like this video series, please like and subscribe and share with all your friends.